Tigray has managed to significantly improve agricultural productivity over the past three decades. This has in large part been due to the aggressive work done to recover degraded land in Tigray. Professor John Nason, professor of physical geography at Giant University, has lived and worked with the people of Tigray and supported efforts to improve food security in the region. That is using repeat photography, going to the same place 10 years later, 20 years later, later taking photos from other people and comparing the landscape oh before there were almost no trees and now uh, so we have really seen that the 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 growth of vegetation has been has been very strong in all these closed areas and also the soil and water conservation the building of of stone builds the controlling of uh, controlling of floods a lot of a lot of work has been done, a lot of results have been done. You know, it is, it is a mountain landscape and mountain landscapes are always difficult to, to, to manage. When I show photos of Tigray, what has been done to people internationally in conferences and they say all that in 20 or 30 years. So they are really surprised even by the intensity of the work that has been done. The professor says that now it is possible that Tigray may have lost much of these gains due to the deadly conflict. The discontinuation of basic services, especially power supply, has had a severe impact on the environment, according to the professor. In several places, there has been deforestation. Yeah, the overall picture is it has continued to grow, but at a slower speed because very often people don't have electricity and they need to go somewhere and to chop a tree in order to have to have firewood or to sell, to make charcoal and to sell it to, to the towns. You must also know that if you see a place like um, like Shire with all the internally di- displaced people from Western Tigray who are there, these people mostly, they need to cook by charcoal. So we have seen in the Tiki Gorge, uh, we have seen in the Tiki Gorge that... Uh, there has been a deforestation in the Tekeze Gorge. This is a typical place where Shire is getting its uh, where Shire is getting its firewood. Uh, so we have this type of local deforestation that is uh, uh, that is occurring. He added that it seems that some of the destruction of the environmental conditions in Tigray appear to be systematic. People are chopping trees. Huh? That that is happening. We have even one. We have also seen that around the beginning of 2021. In some places, and one place that's called Koma Sewa, Koma Sewa is a bit to the east of, of Adigrat, a whole forest of 10 hectares has been cut systematically and turned into charcoal. Don't know what has happened. Maybe an army that went there to, yeah, to make, or, or it was simply sent to Asmara. It's also, it's also possible, but there systematically the whole forest was, was cut. But generally what we observe is... Uh, chopping of trees for making charcoal. What was clearly systematic, according to the professor, was that the violence and the threat of violence on Tigran farmers attempting to plow their lands and the impacts of airstrikes like the Togoga massacre that were crucial to securing the agricultural system. When the Ethiopian and Eritrean soldiers were still there, so it was, we have worked with telephone. At that time, the telephone line was sometimes working, especially in Mekele, because they wanted to give some some image of normality and people took big risks to communicate with us by telephone. They went to a place to be sure that there is no soldier around that that could hear them telephoning. And then they gave us information about plowing is late and uh, farmers are being shot. And then once farmers are shot, they are afraid for coming out. And the the whole area, everybody becomes afraid for coming out. And they told us farmers will try to plow in the night. They need to be back at home at eight or nine o'clock before the soldiers start start moving around. And then we monitored all that with satellite imagery. And that's called Sentinel imagery. We get an image every five days, so you can follow quite exactly what they are doing. And we saw, we saw with time progressing, we saw the plowing was progressing. Overall, quite a lot of land has been plowed. I'm talking about next, last year. Quite a lot of land has been plowed, but it was plowed late. The professor also highlighted that the restoration of basic services in Tigray was essential to ensure food security in Tigray and asked for the international community to stand by farmers in Tigray that need the world to speak on their behalf. The media are almost not talking anymore about Tigray. There is no more war, there is no more fighting. But the blockade, you know, also people imagine a blockade that's something soft, you know, blockade of Cuba or blockade of Iran. but. There is no no problem for Cuba to import food or there is no problem for Iran 
to so the blockade of Iran or the blockade of Cuba is very soft in compared to blockade of Tigray, where everything is systematically closed and nothing can can come in. So the first the first thing is that there should be a really strong pressure from the international community to stop the war and to stop the blockade on uh, on Tigray. And then aid needs to start flowing and, and needs to get in really. Uh, massive, uh, really massively. There are currently more than 6.5 million people in Tigray in dire need of humanitarian assistance. Many are sure to lose their lives if the international community doesn't intervene to ensure an immediate and this daily blockade.